Greetings and salutations folks, it is 8 November, can you believe that we are already in November, a couple of months time and we'll be uh, seeing the end of 2020, hopefully. Uh, so it is a joy and a privilege to be with you this morning and sharing in the Word of God. So let's open with a word of prayer as I light the candle. Gracious, loving and living God, we thank you for this time today. We thank you that even though we don't gather in person necessarily as we have, we gather with you in our hearts and with one another joined through media. We thank you that you are with us wherever we are. We thank you that you are the light of the world and that you come into our lives to share hope, to share life and to share who you are with us. As we meet together this morning, open our hearts to your truth, open our ears to hear your word. We commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' most beautiful name we pray. Amen.
as we begin our time together, just a reminder that on the 22nd of November, we'll be having a Thanksgiving service. And we really do encourage you to send in your uh, virtual Thanksgiving. Uh, either send it to the group, uh, the WhatsApp emergency number that we have still, uh, or Colin or myself, or email it, or link, or anything like that. Um, even maybe if you want to type something out and one of us can read it. Uh, so let's, uh, let's use the opportunity to give thanks to God for all that he has done, for the wondrous works that he has fulfilled during this year, even though it has been a, a really tough year in some ways. I begin this morning with our scripture reading. The first one comes from the book of Joshua, verses uh, 24, 1 to 3, and then 14 to 18, and verse 25. Then Joshua summoned all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, including their elders, leaders, judges, and officers. So they came and presented themselves to God. Joshua said to the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River, and uh, they worshipped other gods. But I took your ancestor Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates, and led him into the land of Canaan, in verse 14 to 18. So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Finally, verse 25. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day at Shechem, committing them to follow the decrees and regulations of the Lord. Our second scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Do not store up treasures here on earth, where moths eat them and rust destroys where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. We give thanks to the Lord for his word this morning. Our scripture reading, our lectionary reading this, the, this week comes from that book of Joshua, and I want you to, to picture it in your mind, set the scene. Uh, Joshua is coming to the end of his life. He's taken over from Moses. He gives them a long account of how God has led the people out from Egypt, uh, how Moses uh, led them through the desert. And then here Joshua is and, and he speaks about how uh, they came into this promised land and the tribes of Israel were given their pieces of land to inhabit and to live. And he says there that God has fulfilled his side of the covenant, essentially. And so right at the end of, of Joshua's life, he, he's trying to call the people to remember their side of the covenant. So God has said, I will be your God, you will be my people. And so he's kept his side of the, of the covenant. And, and Joshua, Joshua here is reminding them that today they need to decide whom they will serve. They, they can choose to serve the gods of the Amorites. They can choose to serve foreign gods, but choose. And so that's where we, we find ourselves today, looking at this concept of serving God, serving the Lord. My, my starting point is actually looking at the word Lord. So Lord, when it's in all capital letters, speaks about God Almighty. That is the name of God. He is the sovereign. He is the master. It's an old word that essentially is reminding us that God is over all, that he has ransomed us with his blood, with the blood of Jesus Christ. And so he, he is our sovereign. He's the one that calls the shots. And, and we don't always like hearing that. We don't always like believing that, that God is sovereign and master of us. Uh, we don't like to really think of ourselves as, as being owned like that. 
But God is, is reminding us that, that we serve him, that this is all about him. This entire world, our lives is, is all about him. And our function in this life is to serve him. And so we're going to journey through what it means to serve God. There are three things that I want to highlight in terms of serving the Lord. Firstly, we all serve someone and something. We might not think that we do, but the reality is that we do. Joshua is asking for the Israelites to choose who they will serve. It's implying that there is one choice. You will either serve those gods or you'll serve the Lord God Almighty. There's no in between. And so it's an either or statement. You will serve one or the other. Bob Dylan, uh, who some might remember from tunes like Hey Mr. Tambourine Man, wrote a song in the late 70s called Gotta Serve Something. Someone, sorry. And this is how the refrain goes. But you're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're going to have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. And so without realizing it, we all serve a person, an idea, a philosophy or an object. The question today is, what is it that you serve? And if we need help answering that question, we can look at our scripture in Matthew 6 and be reminded of Jesus' words, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And, and that's the thing that you're going to serve. So today the question is, where is your treasure? What is the thing that, that holds your attention, that drives you? The thing that, that uh, makes your heart, your heart beat a little bit faster. The question we ask ourselves today is, is what is it that we are serving? Timothy Keller says this, if I have that in capital letters, my life will have meaning. I'll have value and feel significant and secure. Today, as we start, the question is, what is that that in your life? What is the thing that once you have that, your life will have meaning? Once you have that, you will feel valuable and feel significant and feel secure. What is your that? When you have a family, when you have a spouse, when you get a better salary, when you feel safe all the time, when you're out of South Africa and the fears that go with living in South Africa, when you have grandchildren, when you retire, when you're old enough to, to stand up for yourself, when you finish studying, what is the that that you hold on to? This is something that has really challenged me because often I find myself waiting and, and saying when I have, you know, every, every woman's dream of having a family and children, once I have that, then I'll feel significant, then I'll feel of value, like I have a purpose. And so this for me has been a huge challenge because is that the that that I'm serving rather than finding that security in, in Jesus, my heart in serving the Lord and all that he's called me to? If we're pursuing those things with more intensity than we follow Jesus, we are serving someone and something more than we serve the Lord. And so the first question is, who or what are you serving? Secondly, we ask the question of when do we serve? When are we supposed to serve the Lord? Sometimes I'll walk into a family's living room and I'll see this wonderful sign that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's wonderful. But what does that translate into? For you and your family, for your household, what does that look like when you say, we will serve the Lord? Is that once a week? On a Sunday when we serve the Lord going to church? What does service look like? Let's go back to what Colin was speaking about last week, about prayer. And he was speaking from uh, um, Eugene Peterson's book, uh, Working the Angles. And it was about entering into every day in prayer. 
But it was a lovely concept when we think about the Hebrew people that, that believe that uh, creation started in the night, with the night. There was night and then there was day and that was the day. And so the Hebrew people believe that the day starts at sunset and ends at sunset. And so when we wake up in the morning, it's kind of like we're halfway through the, the, the day's activities. And, and Colin was saying, that's where prayer comes in and we say, okay, well, catch me up. Where, where do you want me? What's the plan for today? What's today's project? Uh, that's the kind of heart that we have for prayer. God, what is it that you're calling me to? And I want to say, that's where we then say to the Lord, God, where do you want me to serve you today? What is it that you're calling me to serve you in? Me and my family, we will serve the Lord. So today, show us how we can serve you. Show us what it is that we can do to serve the Most High God. That for me is, is what God has called us to do. Not a, a once a week service where we actually go in and receive for an hour. No, serving the Lord is a lot more like being hands and feet, serving God. So our second question is, how, how committed are you to serving the Lord on a daily basis? How often do you avail yourself to the Lord and say, I'll serve you as my sovereign, as my master, as my Lord? How can I serve you? Where must I serve you? What are the gaps in my community, in my church that I can serve you? The third point that I want to raise is, what will our lives look like when we serve the sovereign Lord God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? Surely our lives would resemble something different because we serve someone different. Because we serve the Lord God Almighty. We serve the, the light of the world. We serve the shepherd of his people. Our lives must truly look different to those that serve money. Promotions, uh, fame and fortune. John Piper says this, There are ways to submit to God that only make him look threatening, not thrilling. There are ways to do what he says that only call attention to the fact that he is an authority, not a treasure. He's saying that the Lord God Almighty has called us to serve him, but we don't serve him out of fear because he will smite us like the, the old fashioned kings. If, if we did something that upset them and we could be thrown to the lions. It's, it's not that kind of serving. It's not out of a place of fear. If I don't do it, I'm going to get into trouble. If I, if I don't uh, commit to going to feed the homeless, then, then God's not going to be impressed with me and, and he'll hold back his blessings. And so my service is out of fear out of uh, fear of retribution, fear of punishment. What he's saying is, is that we shouldn't serve God in such a way that he looks threatening, but rather that he looks thrilling. I love that. I love the way that, that we should maybe look at God and serving God as a thrill, as an adventure. It's something that God has called us to participate in with his heart, for others, with, with giving to, uh, to others, that, that there's nothing harsh, there's nothing uh, violent about God in the way that we serve him as our master. Rather, this is a thrill. This is an adventure that he's called us to. The second part of that quote spoke about us uh, serving God as a treasure, not just because he's an authority. So again, it speaks to the heart of why we worship. If God is a God, a God that we, we treasure, that we, we find it an absolute joy to be in his presence, then serving him is a pleasure. Then serving him is a joy. Then serving him is a privilege because we get to be in the presence of the living God. We get to do what he's called us to do. This whole picture of serving God for me radically changes how I should view me serving God. Friends, this isn't something that I'm doing God a favor when I serve him with my life. I, I don't drag myself as a volunteer 
and onto exec and go, oh, I suppose nobody else will do it and oh, the church needs it and oh, where would they be without me? No, this is a heart of service that says, I get to co-labor with Christ in these areas. I get to bring my gifts. I get to partner with God in this community doing what God does best. And there's a thrill and there's an adventure and there's a treasure in the way that we can serve God. And so my challenge to us today is how are we serving the Lord? What is our heart attitude towards serving the Lord? Does our serving the Lord make him look thrilling and the treasure where our heart lies? Friends, today I call us to, to look at our our commitment to God firstly, are we serving the Lord? Have we committed our lives as service to our King, as our Lord, as our leader, as our master? Are we committed to serving him on a daily basis or is it just for special occasions? And what do our lives reflect when we serve the Lord? Is it a thrill? Is it an adventure, a privilege, or is it a chore? Something that I'm doing God a favor. I'm doing the world a favor. I'm doing Wesley a favor when I serve. Let's check our hearts today. So maybe there are some of us that, that have questioned our hearts in service and we don't really know how, how to do this. Where do we start serving the Lord? Well, firstly, we acknowledge that, that God is Lord, capital letters Lord, that he is the sovereign of the universe, that he is the maker of heaven and earth, that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Everything is about him from start to finish. And we acknowledge that it is by his blood, his death, his resurrection, that we have life. The very life that is in our lungs is as a result of God. And so we serve him with gladness. But we serve him. We acknowledge that our me bows before the Lord God Almighty and him alone. And then we ask God to help us to serve him daily. We ask him to help us unlearn the unhealthy things. We have, have matured and grown up in our lives having served other things, served our own interests, served uh, fame and fortune. And so we need to unlearn that. We need to rewire our brains to an extent. And Romans 12 speaks about that in verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we come to scripture and we say, God, help me transform my life through your word so that I might, I might serve you better. Friends, that it is a privilege to serve the Lord God Almighty. It is a privilege to daily set our hearts on something and say, God, how can I serve you today? You know the business of my life. You know that I, I have other priorities and uh, there's lots happening. How can I serve you in my day-to-day -day life? What do I need to do? What do I need to change? How can I reprioritize? God, help me stop holding on to these things that are my treasures and help me to hold on to you as my first and foremost treasure, my, my first love. As we go from here, may we be reminded of our joy and our privilege to serve the Lord, serve him with gladness, serve him with everything that we have. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord will reflect who God is, that he is a thrill and a treasure by how I live and my family lives out their lives. Amen. Shall we pray together? Lord, thank you for the joy and the privilege it is to serve you and to co-labor with Christ here in this world. Lord, help us to reevaluate where our service lies. What are the things that we're holding on to, the, the that in our lives that, that we hold on to more than we hold on to you? And in some ways, maybe have become idols in our lives. Once we have that, once we own that, once we've achieved that in life, 
Lord, help us to reprioritize and, and reevaluate our lives. Help us also, Lord, to have a look at how often we are serving the Lord, how often we're even praying that prayer. How can I best serve you today, Lord? And then, Lord, help us to reflect a heart of, of servanthood that shows who you are, that reflects a kind God, a good God, a jealous God, a righteous God, a thrilling God. Lord, help us on the, in those times when, when we've thought that, that we're doing you a favor. God, forgive us for those times. And help us, Lord, to, to serve you in a way that reflects your goodness to those around us. The Lord, help us to unlearn the, the, the bad habits that we have. Uh, the things that we have so easily adopted into our lives, the that's in our lives. Help us to reprogram, help us to rethink and help us to be transformed in the renewing of our minds. Give us the mind of Christ to apply daily this thought of how can I serve the Lord today? Lord, just in closing, we want to pray, especially for those who are writing exams. We think of our matrix and we ask, Lord, that you would be with each one as they write their exams, as they apply themselves and the knowledge that they've acquired over all these years, especially in the challenging year of COVID. We thank you for strength and courage to rise up within these young people. And we ask for your special blessing and protection and goodness over them, health and the ability to focus on the, on the tasks at hand. We ask all of this in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. I'm done building my own kingdom. No more seeking worthless idols. Like sheep, we have all gone straight. Choose this day who we will serve as for me. Yeah.